A simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank. Part 29, fitting the snifting valve, making a new nut for the steam pipe, plus making the blast nozzle. Some viewers will be thinking, what is a snifting valve? Well, here it is. A snifting valve is really a check valve, also known as a one-way ball valve. This is the front of the snifting valve with a hole in it, and behind this hole in the front of the valve is a stainless steel ball, which normally covers the hole. Any steam pressure applied to the ball inside the snifting valve will press it against the hole in the front of it, which in turn seals the hole and stops the steam escaping. As I said, it's just like a boiler check valve. The snifting valve in this case is going to fit in the side of the smoke box. That's why the thread on it is at that angle. Often they're fitted at the top of the smoke box. I need to make a specially shaped piece of copper pipe, this is 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter copper pipe, to fit between the outlet on the wet header and the snifting valve. Very much like this in fact, after I'd silver soldered everything in place. The question is, why do we need a snifting valve on a miniature steam locomotive? I will use this simplex as an example. It's a twin cylinder locomotive with slide valves on top of the cylinders. When you open the regulator, steam is allowed from the wet header, which then travels down the superheater, back down the superheater flue, in this case not into the fire, but quite close to it. So the steam that enters the cylinders is very hot indeed, which is all very well when the regulator's open, but what if it's closed? You can then get a vacuum in the superheater, and then it will overheat but not if you have a snifting valve which lets air into the superheater to cool it down slightly and also allow the engine to coast more freely. I've tried to explain that in as few words as possible and I do hope that you understand the importance now of a snifting valve. Time now to withdraw the superheater element. I've paused the video at this point for a specific reason. I need to explain once again what's going on at the end of the superheater. This is a block of gunmetal the superheater pipes are threaded and screw into the block, then the block is heavily silver soldered. I thought I'd mentioned this in the video when I made the superheater, but I've had so many questions about it. One more time, the superheater element does not go through into the firebox, so it won't be glowing red, the silver solder won't melt, and even if it did, the pipes are threaded into the block. If I'd wanted to make a superheater that went into the fire, I would have used stainless steel, welded together at one end. I hope this clarifies the situation. Now it's time to get on with the job. This is a piece of brass hexagon in the chuck in the lathe. I've centre drilled it and here I'm drilling it, tapping size, for a half inch by 32 threads per inch thread. Please note that I'm not tapping this all the way through. I will be drilling it all the way through, but that drill will be much smaller. I've already shown making the flat steam union in a previous video. But unfortunately that was destroyed when I unsoldered it from the superheater element. And why am I making a new union nut anyway? Well, the old one was a rattle fit on the thread. To ease the passage of the half inch by 32 threads per inch tap, I've applied some oil, and it's not squeaking at all. But mainly it's to make it much easier for me to manually rotate the chuck. That's stage one complete, here we have the thread. Time to drill the hole for the steam union all the way through. This twist drill is two imperial sizes larger than 5 sixteenths. The superheater element pipe is 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter, so I'm drilling it bigger than that to allow for the steam union that I'm going to make. Really, I should have bored this hole before I threaded it, then it would have had a really flat bottom. Insert girlfriend joke here. I suppose from an engineering point of view that would have been better, but it's okay with a drilled hole as long as it has a shoulder to firmly hold the steam union to the steam pipe. I silver soldered the new steam union to the pipe, not forgetting to put the union nut on first, and here it is in position. Much better than previously, the old union nut just spun round and round and didn't clamp anything, whereas this one tightens up nicely, as the thread isn't stripped. You will notice that, as usual, I'm using my barco spanner for this job. You will also notice that it's not rounding the ends of the nut. I still get a lot of comments saying, why are you using an adjustable spanner? The answer is, because I am, and Barco spanners are very good anyway. I think I should mention that whenever you see me in these videos, when I'm running a steam engine in steam, I always have a Barco spanner in my pocket, just in case I quickly need to remove a part, and often there's insufficient time to rummage through a box of spanners for the correct one. It's time now to make a really important part, and this part is known as the blast nozzle. I could have made this entire part by turning it in the lathe from a piece of brass hexagon, 
Here are the three component parts that make up the blast nozzle. The hexagon part that I'm holding in the middle is the old union nut from the steam pipe. The wide bottom part is from the original blast pipe, and this smaller part I made from scratch from a piece of brass. Then I silver soldered all three of the parts together. I know it looks a bit messy, but then again it's not going to be very visible inside the smoke box, but that is not the point. This clip shows the nozzle, and can you see the fact that it is tapered? I use the centre drill for this. As I turn the part round, I don't know if you can see it, but I centre drilled the inside of the piece too. This gives me a converging and a diverging cone, and that's how it's shown on the drawing. A blast pipe is not as simple as it looks. An incorrectly made blast pipe will seriously affect the steaming capabilities of the locomotive. This clip shows the part after I cleaned it up in the lathe and I'm screwing it into position. So where was I? Oh yes, blast pipes. Many years ago I used to experiment with blast pipes. I did all sorts of things at them. And most of my experiments were done using a simplex locomotive. I'll go into more detail about blast pipe modifications in a future video. To conclude this video I'd just like to point out something fairly obvious but quite important. You need to leave room in your installation to get a flue brush through to clean the flues. The two bottom flues behind the blast pipe and steam pipe are the most difficult to get to. If the flues get blocked with soot and ash, and that includes the superheater flue, then the engine will become far less efficient. Take the superheater flue for instance, that's why the superheater element is made from 5 16 pipe, so I can get a flue brush in there at the side of the element to clean it out periodically. Everything that I'm fitting in the smoke box area including the blower that I haven't fitted yet, will be bent to such a shape that leaves the flues clear for the flue brush. And that also includes the pipe that comes from the blower's hollow stay. But that's it for now. I'd just like to say stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.